As humans, it's so natural for us to have a deep connection to the land where we were born. And today we're about to meet a remarkable young woman who has built herself a beautiful home by building a tiny house on her generational family farm. Hey Ruby, how are Hi, you? Hi, good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. It's good yeah. to meet you. Yeah, you too. It's a bit of a mission coming out here, eh? It's definitely an adventure, but <laughs> so worth it. This yeah. place is incredible. Yeah, coming through a couple of rivers, it's a bit interesting, but it's amazing when you get out here and it's like paradise. Eh? It's like every time I come home from work, I feel like I'm on holiday. It's the best feeling ever. <laughs> this is such a magical spot. And this land is yeah. very special and has a lot of history for you, doesn't it? It does, yeah, definitely. So I'm a Bethel descendant, so my great-great-grandfather was actually Pa Bethel. So he was one of the first European settlers out here back in the late 1800s, I think it was. Wow. So yeah, I've got deep roots that are connected to this land and the farm. And then my grandparents, they actually bought this farm which was originally 700 acres. They owned the lake and the sand dunes as well, but they had to sell part of the land, unfortunately, because they just couldn't keep it. But now we have 350 acres of farmland and swampland and waterfalls and all that, so it's like paradise. Beautiful, so you yeah. grew up here? Yeah, I've been here my whole life, so 28 years. <laughs> Probably not gonna leave either. It means a lot, definitely, having the family connection to the land because that's like my papa and my ancestors and my roots are all, all here. That's where I come from. So it's definitely part of me and that's kind of why I've got the tattoo of Bethel's on my foot. So wherever I go, I always have Bethel's at my feet. So it's definitely, yeah, part of me and who I am. And what a spot you've created for yourself here as well. This is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is a beautiful spot. I've got my garden here and we go motorbike riding in the weekends and four wheel driving with the Jeeps and go surfing and there's a lake not far, so go swimming and there's plenty to do. <laughs> All that adventure right on your doorstep. Yeah, it's pretty good. And you've built this tiny house here for yourself. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about how this all came about? Yeah, so it started about probably four years ago now. My dad works in the film industry and he gets vehicles for different films and stuff. So he was on the hunt to get a good trailer. So he went down to this place down in Tikawada and saw this company that made trailers and he saw that there was a few offices on top of the trailers and I was like this is cool we could do something like this and designed it all myself and then dad towed this up from Tika Water through the rivers and everything it was a bit of a mission to get up here and then yeah parked it with his bulldozer in the spot right here and yeah then just finished the inside and exterior and everything and then built bathroom and composting toilet separately onto there. What a great idea. Yeah. So you bought this originally as a shell and then have done yeah. all of the interior fit out on your yeah. own. Yeah, tried to do it as cheap as possible and use pretty much all secondhand stuff, like trade me and going to the tip and asking friends like if they've got any, you know, extra things that I could use and everyone's always happy to help. So, yeah. And what size is the tiny house? So it's 10 metres long by 3.5 metres wide. So it's quite good having 3.5 because it doesn't feel too claustrophobic being in a small space. Yeah. <laughs> and the views from this spot are really quite something. I can see that you're even yeah. capitalising on it with the outdoor tub down there. Yeah, I got my outdoor bathtub down there and yeah, it's nice to look out when you're sitting in there above the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and the gardens that you've created here really are so beautiful. And of course that makes sense because you are a professional gardener, aren't you? Yeah, I am a gardener. So yeah, when I come home from work, I spend time up in my veggie gardens there and I've got fruit trees scattered around. So, you know, eventually I do want to um, live off the land completely and be self-sufficient and grow as much as I can. That is quite tricky though because where I am at the moment, this is all black sand, which is hydrophobic soil. So, you know, you can water all you like and it just doesn't really want to go into it. But um, yeah, I'm lucky that there's actually a waterfall around the farm, which I can tap into. It's 700 metres of pipe going up to the top of the waterfall, 20 metres higher than the spot that we're on right now. So don't need a pump or anything or power to get water here. So I can have my sprinkler going you know, all day and it doesn't affect the waterfall at all. So yeah, it's, it's good to have that. <laughs> wow, so you ran 700 metres of pipe to this spot. 
Yeah, it was um, me and a few friends and my dad. We all went to the top of the waterfall and they were all in 100 metre rolls. They were 50 mil wide, so quite heavy. Had to unroll them and then drag them through the bush, through the swamp and then up here. So it was a, it was a real mission to do it all. And it's actually bolted to the top of the waterfall in like a rock pool. And then, yeah, when we got the water flowing up here, it was just like the best day ever. I was so happy about that. So you're definitely sorted for the water. What about power here? So I'm connected up to my dad's power just up top and then for hot water and stuff I have gas bottles. So it's kind of good. If I ever did decide to move the house, which I'm definitely not going to, I mean I could plug into power wherever I went, yeah. Well your home here looks absolutely beautiful. I love all the work that you've put into the gardens. The view is just to <laughs> die for and I'm so excited to see inside the home. Can we check it out? Yeah, come have a look. Cool, thank you. Oh, this is absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. There is a tremendous amount of character that you've built into this place. Yeah, there's lots of interesting like little knickknacks that I've got in here and lots of secondhand things and yeah, I wanted to save money so I tried to do as much as I could as myself, yeah. And taking on a project like this as a DIYer, had you ever done anything like this before? No, not at all, but um, my ex-boyfriend, he used to be a builder, so he was very handy at coming up with all sorts of ideas and stuff, so yeah, we did a lot together, so it was good. I love the table you've got here as well, all of this beautiful timber. Yeah, so each plank of wood is actually a different type of tree from the farm, so it was actually my grandparents' table, so they had six kids, so there was eight of them sitting around this table having dinner. And now I've got it in my place, which is pretty awesome. So you can see all the different types of grain, some Putakara and Kauri and yeah, all sorts. What a treasure. I absolutely love it. And talking about the timber, the countertop in your mm. kitchen, that is stunning. Yeah, so they were just some old planks of Putakara that had been milled up just sitting in a wool shed. So we thought it'd be good to use that and turn it into something beautiful. So yeah, I used a lot of resin and a lot of sanding and planing and it worked out well. And the copper splashback to match, look at that. Yeah, so that was kind of a random idea that my ex-boyfriend had. Just had this old hot water cylinder that was sitting and he thought he could just turn that into a splashback. And it was quite good because it's quite pliable. So it was actually quite easy to put it along the back there, yeah. And it's a great size kitchen. I see you've got lots of storage and lots of prep area there. Yeah, so I actually used to be a baker. I went to chef school and I wanted a decent sized kitchen because it's really important to me. Yeah, I spend a lot of time making food. I don't like to go out for takeaways or anything, so I'm always trying to make things from scratch. And of course, you've got your veggie gardens right there to pick from as well. Yeah, so I can just walk up there and just, you know, pick fresh produce, like got plenty of cucumbers and courgettes and tomatoes at the moment, so living off that. Been making a lot of pasta out of courgettes, which is like the best thing ever. There's nothing quite <laughs> like living off your own bit of land, is there? Yeah, it's a good feeling, that's for sure. And of course, right next to the kitchen here, we've got this beautiful, very cosy looking fireplace and the schist stone behind it is just really a great feature, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. That was kind of my project over winter. I was just desperate to have a good fireplace and so yeah I was on the hunt for schist and my uncle actually noticed that there was some in someone's paddock and he was like oh I'll just go you know ask Tony down the road and so I went along and asked if I could have some of schist and he was more than happy that was going to be used so just mortared it down I borrowed my neighbor's grinder and cut the backs off a lot of the stone because they were too big so that's why it's like a bit wonky and crazy but it's kind of interesting. <laughs> I love it. It looks really natural, which is perfect. Yeah. And then over here, we've got your lounge and what yeah. a wonderful and comfortable looking space this is. Yeah, it's quite a nice size uh, couch and it's long enough that you can actually lie down here and sleep on it. I've had lots of people stay the night, so it's very handy. <laughs> Beautiful coffee table too. Yeah, so Bo and I made that. There was just some old bits of coldy under my parents' house, so put that together and also use the same wood for my um, bed. So I made the bed out of Coldy as well and then some chopping boards as well. What a treasure to have all of these remarkable timbers just lying yeah. about the property here. Yeah, I mean, it's good too. And lots of manuka around. So it's good for the bees as well, getting manuka honey and then for firewood. Use a lot of tea tree for firewood, yeah. For my pizza oven and for this fireplace, yeah. So you actually keep some bees here as well, do you? Yeah, I have bees just down below, yeah, actually got them from a friend. So my friend has her own company. Um, she 
rescues bee swarms. So it was a rescued swarm that I got from her. Yeah, which is down there. That's fantastic. So you've adopted a colony. Yeah, adopted a colony, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> and that photo there looks like it's got a bit of a story behind it. Yeah, it does. So it's Bethel's back in the 1970s where there's actually no houses in the subdivision there. And I saw these old photos at my friend's place. They were kind of all curled up and they looked like they were just going to be falling apart. And so I wanted to preserve that piece of history. So it's kind of nice looking back on what Bethel's was with no houses. Beautiful. What a treasure. And then through there, is that your bedroom? Yeah, that's my bedroom through there. Cool. Can we take a look? Yeah, sure. Oh, what a dreamy space, especially with the mosquito net above the bed. It looks quite idyllic, doesn't it? Yeah, I definitely need that with having a swamp right below. I get lots of mosquitoes at night, so it's important to have. I also made a mosquito net door for here so I can have the door open at night. Again, lots of storage in here as well. So you've got your wardrobe there and a good sized chest of drawers. Yeah, that chest of drawers was actually from Trade Me, so <laughs> it was a pretty good score. Yeah, what a great yeah. find. Yeah, but yeah, plenty of storage. The wardrobe is quite decent. It's not actually full yet. Got plenty of space in there. And you've got these shell handles on the door. That is so unique. Yeah, it's kind of funky. Yeah, so my friend from California actually brought them over for me because I wanted some shell door handles. And what I did was just resined in a screw and then just screwed them together. So it looks kind of funky. It sure does. Yeah. Very clever. Yeah. And then out here, we've got your bathroom and composting toilet. Yeah, should we go have a look? Let's take a look. I love how you've done this. First of all, there really is a lot to be said for actually separating the bathroom from the main living area in yeah, a tiny house, isn't there? Yeah, it makes it quite good. I mean, it meant that I could actually have a bigger house because I've got these extra buildings here. So I didn't mean that everything was all crammed into one. And, you know, it didn't take long to build this. All the windows and doors I actually got from Trade Me, they were painted white. So I just sanded them back and it just looked so much better. And then. The wood on the outside is actually from some pine trees that we used to have down below. So they got milled up when I was probably like 18 or something and I said to Dad, I was like, make sure you keep me some of those because I'm going to build my house one day. And yeah, he did. So I actually had to pay for them to get treated when I was like 18. But I was like, save me some. That's so planning in advance, that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. 10 years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. So I was always thinking about it, always. I was always like, I'm going to, you know, be mortgage free before 30 and that was always my goal and yeah. Can we peek inside? Yeah, come have a look. Thank you. Oh, now this is very luxurious for an outdoor bathroom, isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't, I didn't really plan on it being luxurious. I mean, I thought it was just going to be like a tin shack, but it had ended up being actually quite nice. So these tiles were actually getting thrown out from a building site in Hobson Point. So me and my ex-boyfriend, we hadn't ever done tiling before, but gave it a crack and it worked out all right. It looks great. Good yeah. job. And the stone floor in here is really something. Yeah. So um, Bo's dad's a stonemason and he had all this leftover stone. So yeah, we did that together and saved a lot of money by doing that. And shelves again on the door here? Yeah. So these are some flax nail shelves that I found on my hike that I did around Cape Ringer picked up these and also along my way I found some coral on Cape Maria Van Diemen Beach and hiked that with me for three days. Beautiful. I'm guessing not the most practical thing to be hiking with but well no, worth taking it. Oh, definitely worth it. Yeah, it's a cool feature. It sure is. And what's hiding behind these doors here? Um, so behind here I've got my washing machine and then some shelves and my spare gun and broom on the back of this door just hanging up. And you've chosen to put the composting toilet in another separate building. Yeah, so the composting toilet that we actually got has a big tank underneath it, which is good because you only need to empty it every couple of years, so it's handy, but um, needed a site to access underneath. So it just made sense putting it out there rather than having it inside. I mean, you can actually put them inside. You just need a place where you can access the bottom. So how long have you been living here now? About four years now. So we started all this in the start of 2017. So it's all happened... Like, it's gone really fast, you know, it's just flown by like that. And how are you finding tiny living? Yeah, I have no problems with it at all. When my friends come, they think it's a bit crazy having an outdoor bathroom and toilet, but I actually quite enjoy it because, you know, I come out here and at night I can appreciate the stars and the moon and what that's all doing. And, you know, if you were living in town, you wouldn't see that at all. 
And you said before that a major life goal of yours was to be debt free before you were 30. Can you talk to me a little bit about the budget that was involved in creating this place? Yeah, sure. So in total, it costs about $60,000, which isn't a lot at all compared to, you know, what all my friends are paying for houses at the moment. So like the main cost was actually the trailer that's actually dug into the sand here, which is kind of good. You can't actually see it and the shell. So that was $55,000 to get that all done. But then, you know, finishing it all and building all this, that was probably an extra $5,000. Wow. Yeah. So everything else was $5,000. Yeah, because we just did it all ourselves and just used secondhand material. So didn't have to buy anything brand new. I didn't want a huge mortgage because I just didn't want to be tied down to the bank. I feel like it's kind of like such an imprisoning kind of feeling, you know? Like it's like having a life sentence pretty much to the bank because you're going to spend the rest of your life paying it off. And I didn't want to have debt. I wanted to have freedom. Don't want to work too much as well. You know, I want to look back on my life and think that I didn't work it away. You know, I just enjoyed every moment. So. Yeah, it feels pretty nice having my own space and here it literally feels like I'm on holiday. So it's just such a refreshing feeling. I'm definitely living the dream that I've always wanted, you know, growing stuff and working my way to be completely self-sufficient is what I've always wanted. So yeah, it's nice to have that happen. So what does the future hold for you now? Hopefully just being self-sufficient eventually. That is my, my plan in life. and. I also would love to have like a community garden out at Bethel's and do that full time and just grow stuff for people and yeah, give my time back to everyone else. That would be my dream. That really is such an incredible vision and I cannot wait to watch you turn that into a reality. But for right now, what an absolutely magical place you've created for yourself here. Ruby, thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thanks for coming out. It's been awesome having you here. It's our pleasure. <laughs> what Ruby has created here is just beautiful. She has such an entrenched family connection to this land. The fact that so many generations of her family have sat around this very table is just remarkable. And now with this home, Ruby has got to create her own very special mark on this very special place.